Hey, James and Jazz here, excited to be filming another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about gratitude. We just finished celebrating Thanksgiving to date this video. And on Thanksgiving, it just seems to be the time of year where everybody focuses on what they're thankful for. And, you know, I remember as a kid going around the table and talking about that. What are you, what are you thankful for? And we would go around each individual would go around and say what they're thankful for, what they're grateful for. Um, and that's powerful. And that's a practice that you should get in the habit of doing a lot. Um, Every day. Not, not, just, not just on Thanksgiving. I mean, Thanksgiving's great and is right. a great reminder to be thankful, to be grateful, and to express gratitude. Um, but, you know, it's, it's important to get in the habit of doing that if you can every day. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about that. We're actually going to go through scriptures um, that tons of scriptures that talk about being grateful, being thankful. Um, and if the Lord repeats it that much over and over again, if it's repeated over and over again in the word of God, I think it's probably something important and something that we should do. I mean, it even talks right. about how it's a good medicine. I mean, what is medicine for? Yeah, right? there's so many scriptures and obviously the Lord's trying to hammer home a point. Yeah. And it's not just, oh, we're making a video about being thankful. No, like this is something that the Bible teaches just as much as we need to teach on healing mm -hmm. and faith. We need to teach on gratitude. So, yeah. you know, like, like you said, we just passed Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving shouldn't just happen on one day out of the whole year. Yeah. And so we really thought what a relevant topic to bring to James and Jazz. Yeah. So let's dive in and get going. Yeah. yeah. And we've talked about, you know, in other videos, we've brought up gratitude and we've talked about some scriptures on gratitude. Um, and it's just, uh, it comes up all throughout the Bible. So if we're doing a Bible study with us uh, on a certain book of the Bible, we're always going to come across being grateful and being thankful. Um, even when you talk about praying, you know, how should you pray? I mean, the Lord's Prayer, I mean, it talks about that as well. So it's so important to be thankful, to give, uh, to be thankful in your prayers, being thankful toward God for all that He's done for you, but also in this world, being thankful toward others. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's always, always going to be something to be thankful for. Sometimes yeah. people are like, well, I don't have anything to be thankful for this year. And it's just like, okay, do you have all four limbs? Yeah. Do you have a roof over your head? No. Like, do you have food in the refrigerator? Like there's just things that people take for granted. But I just was going through my phone looking at old pictures and screenshots and I found a photo of a little boy who had both legs amputated right here in the middle. And he was sitting on the cement and he drew in chalk the rest of his legs with feet. Mm. And the quote said, there's always something to be thankful for. And it's yeah. like, how many times do we just overpass what other people wish they had? Yeah. And it's just so important that every day we're thankful for something. There's yeah. always something to be thankful for. And gratitude really turns the attitude around. Yeah. Yep. Um, so this quote is really great. It says, Dear God, I want to take a minute not to ask for anything from you, but simply to say thank you for all that I have. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of times people are always like, okay, God, you're my genie. I'm going to rub the Bible and ask for three wishes. No, yeah. that's not how God works. He's God. He's not a genie. Yeah. But I also think that people go to God a lot to just ask him for things. They don't yeah. go to God per se to spend time with him and just to learn what the Bible says. They go to him wanting something, but yeah. we're supposed to seek God for who he is and not for his hands and what he can give us. Yeah. So um, that's really important to, to, to come to God mm -hmm. without a motive. Yeah. Just to say thank you, like not because you're trying to sugarcoat him and ask for the next thing, yeah. you know? Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're supposed to count our blessings and not count our problems. And this is all about perspective, changing our attitude 
and um, feel free to come in whenever I know I've got yeah. lots of quotes I mean I just to me a big reason for filming these this this specific video is because I know that there are a lot of people out in the world right now some of you who might be on the other side of this camera and for whatever reason you came across a gratitude video or maybe you follow James and Jazz already or you follow one of us individually on social media or both of us but you might be in a slump right now and you might just find that all you're doing is complaining all you're doing is grumbling and complaining you get around your significant other or your family and you just find yourself every word out of your mouth is complaining yeah. and you're just frustrated and things aren't going your way and you're just you know you're mad at god you're mad at your circumstances and man why can't i just get a break why why is everything always falling apart in my life and you don't ever notice that a good thing is coming out of your mouth perhaps or maybe as i'm speaking you're recognizing that because the reality of it is you have to decide how you're going to respond to certain circumstances. I always talk about in circumstances, it's best to respond rather than react. Reacting is instantly jumping on, oh, why, why did you do that? Like just flipping out, whatever the circumstances, just instantly getting angry or frustrated and just reacting with explosive anger or whatever it may be. Feelings, emotions. Yeah, yeah. Rather, than, rather than responding, take a beat. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you for a moment, like, okay, what? A... And then respond. Right. And responding may take longer in certain cir circumstances than others. Maybe you got to step out, take a breath, don't call that person right away, pray about it, whatever the case may be. But what God is looking for is for us to be grateful, to be yeah. thankful. As Jasmine talked about, you know, the, the, my two legs, my, my capable hands and feet, my, you know, the fact that I can talk, that I can see, that I can hear, that I can taste, I have my senses, I have the roof over my head, I have the vehicle that I drive, I have the device I'm recording on. Your wife. You know, your yeah, cat. my wife, my cat. Like, there's so many things to be grateful for. And if you're watching this on something, even, hey, you have access to watch this video, whether that's your device that you're watching it on or someone else's. I, I've seen a whole lot of homeless people on the streets in LA that probably didn't have access to something like this, to watch a video like this. Some of them to had get phones. encouragement. Yeah, or to have internet or whatever the case may be. So one thing that I just wanted to, to talk about in response to what I just mentioned, maybe you're that person that is just frustrated and you just, you keep saying, man, I just can never get my break. Like nothing ever works out for me, whatever. Well, this scripture doesn't say anything about thankfulness or gratitude, but it, it's a powerful one. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is adm admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That comes from Philippians 4, 8. So stop focusing on the things that perhaps aren't going the way you would like them to go and start focusing on the great things, what is going great in your life. Yeah. It's not that you're ignoring those things when something frustrating happens or whatever, but instead of grumbling and complaining about that situation, put it in God's hands, trust in the Lord, and, and be grateful and thank God. God, I just want to thank you for this. I just want to thank you for that. Whatever it is, focus, as it says here, um, Think about such things. All those things I mentioned, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. Focus on those things. Don't focus on the things that aren't quite going right. Trust the Lord with those things that he's going to flip the script. One yeah. other script. Oh, go ahead. If it's not going to matter five years from now, mm -hmm. don't spend more than five minutes fretting about it. Yeah, that's good. I like that. The, the other scripture I wanted to focus on, which also does not say anything about being thankful or grateful. I was reading in Proverbs 17 the other day, and I mean, these, it's funny because these are the main scriptures that came to mind for me right. as we decided we were going to film this video, which it's easy to go online and, and Google and scriptures on being grateful or thankful. Like, but these were things that, that the, the Lord put on my heart as a result of filming this video. Um, so Proverbs 17, 22 says a joyful, cheerful heart brings healing to both body and soul, 
but the one whose heart is crushed struggles with sickness and depression. Wow. So I just talked so about focusing on Philippians 4, 8, what it says there, focusing on the things that are going great. Don't, don't even give a, a second to the things that aren't going great. There's no point in that. Just be like, you know what, Lord, I'm going to trust you with that. I just open my hands. I release that situation to you. I know that you're going to work it out in your good and perfect timing. I trust in you. You created me in my mother's womb. You placed the stars in the sky. You know them by name. You know the, the number of hairs on my head. I trust you with that situation, God. And if it's supposed to work out, it's going to work out. And I'm believing it's going to work out in your perfect timing. I'm not going to allow sickness and depression into my life. Because that's what that scripture says. A joyful, cheerful heart brings healing to both body and soul. Do you want some of that? Then stop focusing on the things that aren't working out and be grateful for what God has blessed you with and trust him with those other things. Yeah. Because the one, uh, the one whose heart is crushed struggles with sickness and depression. You don't want that in your life. People can worry and, and talk themselves into being sick and depressed. So my encouragement to you through this video is let's flip the script and let's let's learn to be grateful and thankful and spend time thanking others, thanking God, thanking God for what he's blessed you with, thanking people in your life for what they've blessed you with. Right. Um, so those two scriptures were Philippians 4, 8 and Proverbs 17, 22. Can I elaborate on yeah, this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, such great scriptures. Philippians 4, 8, we call it the Philippians 4, 8 filter. Uh, basically, if a thought comes in your head and it's not true, and that's the first thing that's listed, then it can't pass go. Like, you can't yep. continue to think on it because it doesn't even pass the first test. So, if whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, lovely, like, if your thoughts are not matching up with that, it's a filter that those bad thoughts should get caught in and that you can't continue to think on them. Um, your thought life, the, these six inches is where the battlefield is. That's where the devil will try to combat you. And it's like a, a cyclone. It, you get all wrapped up in it. It turns into like a black hole and you can't pull yourself out. So it's really important to make sure that you monitor your thought life because your thought life is what will transcend and inspire your attitude with either gratitude or complaining. And so um, check out our video, Battlefield of the Mind. I know we talk a lot about that. Mm -hmm. We also talk about um, the power of the tongue, speaking life. That will affect your attitude if you want more videos to watch. Mm -hmm. um, but the joyful, cheerful heart brings healing to both body and soul. So your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. So normally when you're depressed, when you're struggling, when you're down, that's in your soul. That's the soul realm. And so that is where thinking on positive thoughts is going to influence your soul. And when you're joyful, when you're thankful, it is really going to be hard to stay in that depressing, um, negative state, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. And um, it's really obvious, and I know that we both have gone through uh, situations in our lives where we have been depressed and we've seen the fruit of the sickness and depression in our lives mm -hmm. and as soon as we get right in the situation whether it's right with God whether it's making changes in our lives that God's told us to make whether it's thinking and meditating on certain scriptures or whatever the situation is once we do that we see the fruit of the joy and the cheer come yeah. back into our lives so the word works y'all yeah but I love that you picked those yeah it's really good. And so it's like you want to you want to get yourself from wherever you are to that joyful, cheerful heart. And that comes from what we're really going to be talking about today. You're in charge of, of that, your emotions and your will and all that different stuff. You're in charge. You can take control. You don't have to allow right. your circumstances or anything around you no, to shouldn't. take control. Um, you know, my old pastor, Pastor Anthony, used to talk about joy jackers. You know, don't, don't allow the joy jackers in your life, the people that just come into your life to take away your joy. No, you are in control of your joy. You're in control of how you're going to respond in, in, circ in uh, certain circumstances. So, um, yeah, I just encourage you a couple ways you can do that. We're about to start talking about. I see Jazz has 
one of the next things in our notes is reward people who have been good to you. And so it's like Jazz and I are in the habit of if somebody's done something good, something sweet to us, whether it's maybe they allowed us to stay at their house, you know, maybe we're on a trip and they allowed us to stay over in their guest bedroom or someone sent us when you, we had a lot of people through James and Jazz that have given us uh, gifts or donations. If we have their address and we can send them a thank you card. Not if we, they're international. Yeah, if they're international, that hasn't happened. We but, do emails. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, we'll at least send text messages or, or emails or, you know, messages through social media. But, you know, we love to do thank you cards because sometimes people will send you something and they don't even know if you got it. When you don't, if you don't respond and say, Hey, I just wanted to let you know, like, I really appreciate what you sent me. So it's like, yeah, the first thing is responding in person. If they've given you something in person, um, or over a text message, if they sent you something, but then also falling in line with a thank you card. In addition to it's so easy to send a text, but when you go out of your way to write something in a card and do it the old fashioned way, it just, it means a lot. Like it puts a smile. Whenever I get a thank you card, it puts a smile on my face. Like, wow, I, I really appreciate that they noticed that I went out of my way to do that for them or give them that gift or whatever it is. So a thank you card, especially if you're in a slump right now, one way that you can flip the script on that is to be thankful, to be grateful. Think of someone that you can send a thank you card to, or maybe just a card that says thinking of you. Just wanted to let you know I've been thinking about you and praying for you. And, you know, I just want to thank you for being a great friend in my life for so long. And, you know, I'm here for you if you need anything. Maybe the Holy Spirit will put somebody on your heart. But, you know, then they'll get back to you. You never know and say, man, you have no idea how much that meant to me. I've been in the slump. And just knowing that you've been thinking about me and praying for me, that means the world. So I love to see people's reactions when they get a thank you card or when they're like, thank you for the thank you card. Like, it's kind of funny when, the, when you I think know. of it, but it's just awesome. And it, it makes you, it, it gets us happy and excited to drop the thank yous in the mail and be like, man, like they were so good to us. The least we can do is send them a thank you card and, and let them know how much we appreciate them. So yes. And, um, there's like, we've said, there's so much to be grateful for. Yep. I mean, you think about the fact that you even just woke up this morning. There's people last night that made plans for what they were going to be doing today, and they aren't living today anymore. Yeah. You woke up. Like, you still have the chance to love people, go for your dreams. Um, be grateful that you woke up this morning. Thank the Lord for your salvation, for the fact that nothing, nobody, can take your salvation away from you. Like, that's something to be grateful for, absolutely, that you get to live in heaven someday for eternity, that you, your sins are forgiven as far as the east is from the west. Thank God that you're healthy. We've talked about that already. Just, there's so much to be thankful for. Um, James already talked about rewarding people who have been good to you. That's just common sense. But also, it's, a lot about perspective today, just realizing that you maybe have seen better days, but you've also probably seen worse days. Um, you maybe don't have everything that you want, but you probably have everything you need, or the most part, mm -hmm. if you're watching this video. Um, your life might not be perfect, but you are blessed, and God loves you. And if you are lacking, ask him because the word says that he will provide for your needs. Yeah. yeah, he provides for the birds of the air. So how much more will he care for you? Um, and, he's, and his word says to ask. So I also want to talk about gratitude in the way that a lot of us have prayed certain prayer requests for years and now they're reality. And that is very humbling yeah. when you can remember the days that you prayed for the things that you currently have. Yeah. And that is just a sobering reality of God's goodness. Um, for example, I have posters in my office that have really helped me just increase my gratitude daily. Um, as I see before and after photos on my walls of things I prayed for and now the reality, the actualized prayer request yeah. in physical form, like in the picture. So I have before and after pictures 
of all these dreams and requests, prayer requests that I've had throughout my lifetime. And when you look at that wall, it's like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. God, you are so good. Like, and I've only been on this earth a short time compared to how long I will be here. Yep. So to see your faithfulness and your goodness and the blessings that you've given me is just amazing. And I can't help not look at those posters and just sit in awe of how good God is and to be thankful. And we talked about this earlier, but someone else is praying for the things that you take for granted. So make sure to always be um, having a, a, gra a grateful heart for everything. I even think about parents on how you, your kids, I'm sure you like to be thanked for anything that you do. Yeah. Um, I know my parents like to be thanked. I'm sure we'll like to be thanked mm -hmm. if and when we're parents. And, yeah. um, anybody, a friend likes to be thanked, a pastor likes to be thanked, anybody in their rightful mind likes to be thanked. So how much more does God probably yep. want to be thanked as well? But oftentimes we kind of just take God for granted because he's like, oh, he's God, he's got to do that. Like he's got to supply for my needs and give me direction. He's not obligated to, he's, he just does that because he's good. So we need to be thankful for all of that. Um, People always talk about living the good life, but there's a quote that I really like that says, a good life is when you smile often, dream big, laugh a lot, and realize how blessed you are for what you have. Yeah. And so when you're smiling and when you have vision, that's the dreaming big part. When you're laughing, that's the cheerful, joyful heart that James talked about earlier. And realizing how blessed you are, that's that remembrance. The Bible talks about remembering Yep. God's goodness. They'd put up monuments of God's faithfulness. Well, we're supposed to constantly bring things to our remembrance of how good God is and how he answers prayer. Um, that's important to do. All right. Do you feel like you do all that you can to please everyone around you, but it seems like they don't appreciate it? This might be for somebody out there says your heart is big you would jump fences to do things for people jump fences for people who have even betrayed your trust several times yeah. you're not alone that's how god feels when we take his love for granted you see all he wants is a relationship with you yeah. he wants to talk with you daily and he loves you it doesn't feel good when people take our love for granted and we should never take god's love for granted we need to thank him for the small blessings as well as the big. I love that. I thought I just needed to throw that in here as well. Yeah. Um, God has never stopped being good. We've just stopped being grateful. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really I powerful. Think, <laughs> I think on that note, you know, I, I was kind of looking for a good time to jump back yeah. in. Um, I think so often God will bless us. He'll give us something. And then, you know, before you, you know it, it's like you're asking for something new. You want something else. Because the flesh is never satisfied. Yeah. And, you know, God's attitude is probably like, well, you haven't even thanked me for the last thing I gave you. Or whatever the case may be. Right. Like, you know, we're, we live in a world where it's like people, you know, the world of iPhones. I mean, everybody wants the, the newest, the, the latest, the greatest, best thing. And it's like... How are you treating what God has already blessed you with? Are you treating it, um, you know, is your car a mess? You know, maybe you've been blessed with a car and you're already like, man, this thing's a piece of junk. I can't wait to get a new one. Like, man, this, you know, whatever. Like, are you taking care of what God has already given you? You know, is your car clean or is it, is it full of trash? Right. Is there just, you know... Uh, fast food bags and, and drinks and stuff, you know, you spill something and you don't really clean it up very well. Like how, how well are you taking care of what God has already given you? Your home, you know, are you just like, man, I can't wait to get out. This, this place is just, you know, I, I just can't stand this house. It's too small. It's not, and you're just constantly complaining. Well, are you caring for what God has already given you? Cause why would he want to give you something uh, better when you're not caring for what he's yeah. already given you. He's like, you know, it's that idea of just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, being a good steward of yeah. what God has given you. 
Um, so I just, I encourage that, like, look at what God has already given you and look at how are you caring? How are you stewarding what God has already given you now yeah. begin to take care of that. And then maybe God will be like, well, I see how well you're stewarding what I've given you. And I see how grateful and how thankful you are and how you continue to thank me. I'm just going to surprise you and bless you with something even greater. Yeah. So, and that's scriptural. Luke yeah. 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Mm -hmm. Your character is developed in the little things, in taking care of something and being grateful for something that's little. That's when things start snowballing and you get rewarded with more. Yeah. So that's scripture. Are you thanking God for the job that you have or are you just constantly complaining about the job you have? Is when you get that check in the mail, when you get paid, is it like, God, thank you so much for blessing me with the job that I have and blessing my finances through this job. I'm so grateful. I I thank you so much, God. You know, it's like when we get a check in the mail, the first thing is like, thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter who signed the check. Yeah, we'll send a thank you if it was a, you know, somebody blessed us or whatever. But it's like, thank you, Lord. Thank you for providing. Thank you for moving in that person's life to cause them to want to give to James and Jazz ministry or whatever it may be. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, how would you like me to be a good steward with what you've right. given me? Yep. This is yours. I thank you, Lord, for what, what you've blessed me with, but how would you like me to spend this? Because I still consider it God's. Okay, you want me to give, okay, give some of that to that person and then some to that person. Of course, you know, give some to the church. What else, Lord? What else? Like, I know you're going to provide for all of my needs. So I always want to have the, the hands open so that, you know, I'm not clenching my fists around what God has given me and treating it as an idol, but rather my hands are open so that people can, can reach in and grab what they need or so that I can hand out never a, a closed fist. I want to keep my hands open so God can continue to pour in so I can always be a funnel to be used by the Lord. That's what gratitude is. Gratitude, when I think about gratitude or, you know, I think about worship even, just like hands are open and like, I'm so grateful, God. Thank you so much. Like I'm not having to cling on to anything of this world. I cling on to God, but it's just my hands are wide open just receiving all that he wants to give me and and do through me, in and yeah. through me. So Yes. Yeah. I had several thoughts that came to my mind, but I I'm sorry. didn't write them down. <laughs> well, it's all right. <laughs> all right. Um this is the same quote but just worded differently. Are you walking in blessings that used to be your prayer requests? Thank mm. him. You know, there is a scrapbook that I made for this one right here um, that I started making when I was 16 years old. It was a scrapbook for my future husband. Um, A godly husband was on my prayer request list for years. (laughs) And I know a godly wife was prayer request for him for years as well. And so just to wake up next to each other every day and he's there and it's an answered prayer is yeah. just another sobering thought of how good God is. Amen. Just my pageant crowns, my Miss Nebraska Teen USA, my Miss Nebraska USA crowns sitting in my office. I look at them. I dreamt of being Miss Nebraska USA ever since I was six years old. Well, I did both pageants. I won both pageants. It's like, Lord, you're so good. So it's just amazing um, when you actually take time out of your day to say thank you to God or to remember His goodness and faithfulness in your life. We are called to be grateful for small things, big things, and everything in between. Um, Be happy with what you have while also working for what you want. I know Mm -hmm. you always want to be better. You want to shoot for excellence. Um, but at the same time, be grateful for what you have. Cause like he referenced, the flesh is never satisfied. Yeah. There's always something out there that there's a newer model, a newer version. Somebody's always younger, richer, smarter, stronger, t- more talented, whatever it is. Like you always want more and more and more. Yeah. Well, the Bible in Ecclesiastes says that God has placed eternity in the hearts of man. 
So nothing in this world is ever going to satisfy us. We're always going to want more because this world cannot satisfy us. Mm -hmm. That's why we're always searching for something better, mm -hmm. an upgrade. But in God, everything that we are craving is found in Him, in Jesus. And so mm -hmm. really... We can be grateful for all these materialistic items, knowing that they're never going to satisfy us. But we can be grateful for them, and we can be good stewards of them, yeah. and use them to advance the kingdom of God. Like, we're grateful for our iPhone, because we can make videos with it. That yeah. gets out to people on the other side of the planet. Yeah. Anyway. All That's right. good. No. Um, God hears you on the very first thank you, and He appreciates and loves it. Yeah. You know, we're made in the image and the likeness of God. We like to be thanked. We like to feel appreciated. So does our Heavenly Father. He's our Heavenly Dad, and He wants us to tell Him thank you. Um, you attract what you are. That's a, a big one. Mm -hmm. um, a magnet of gratitude. Uh, if you're like a magnet of gratitude, you'll be attracting other things to your life to be grateful for. I know Terry Seville Foy talks about that a lot. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. huge. <laughs> I mean, if you're constantly complaining, you're going to be losing friends. You're going to be losing your peace. You're going to be losing anything to be grateful for because all your opportunities and friends are going to like distance from you. But mm. if you're constantly thanking people, if you're constantly making others feel valued, how much more will people want to work with you and spend time with you and they'll think of you and want to reward you? It's just like a snowball effect. Really? Yeah, and I think about, you know, we just celebrated Pastor Appreciation Month and, you know, everybody was, you know, all month long, we, you know, there'd be a video on the screen during church saying, you know, be sure to thank your pastors and whatever the case may be, you know, thank them with a gift or whatever you'd like to do, but just make sure you thank your pastors this month. And so everybody's giving cards and gifts and whatever. And I just remember, you know, Pastor Sheila, Pastor Bruce just saying, hey, you know, we want to let you know we got your gifts. We're so grateful, and like we're we're we have all these thank you notes. We're going to be handing out today from the people that gave us gifts last week. And you know, someone left a card and didn't put their name on it. And I don't know if there was a reason for that. You just wanted to be anonymous, but we just want to thank you because we'd love to we'd love to get you a thank you card. But we don't know who you are, so if that was a mistake, let us know. But just like making the point that they're they have thank you cards and they want to make sure that they give everybody a thank you card. They're so appreciative. And, and yeah, that's of course the way, you know, Terry is. And, um, you know, even when I, I've done some work with her, Terry Savelle Foy, and she sent me a thank you card and some gifts and just super sweet. Um, so people appreciate being recognized, being thanked back if they've done something great or something nice, something kind out of the ordinary, whatever it may be. Um, and that's just having a cheerful heart and, and, it makes people want to do more for you when you're expressing gratitude, when you're thanking yeah. them. And I just, I kind of want to talk about when I went, a couple things. When I went on my trip to Uganda, uh, a mission trip, and I had to actually ask for help to go. It was an expensive trip. The mission trip was expensive. I had to send out emails and text messages and make phone calls and say, hey, you know, would you be willing to... Uh, you know, sponsor. give, give or sponsor toward this mission trip. Um, anything would be, would be helpful. This is how much I need to raise. You know, I reached out to sponsors that I had, you know, from the fitness industry, a lot of them helped me, but everyone that gave, you know, same thing. Like I made sure I'm going to send a thank you card to all of them. I want to thank them right away yeah. via text message or phone call. But then I also want to make sure I have their address that I can send them a thank you card. I want to follow up with them, let them know how the trip went. So that actually makes it so that people want to next time around, if you do another mission trip, you have something else going on, they're going to remember like, last time they didn't even thank me right like we did the same thing for our wedding all the the gifts yeah. that we got it's like making sure that they know one they know that we got the stuff because that's one thing that even terry talks about when i don't get a thank you or or something i wonder did they get that in like the mail an acknowledgement did it did it disappear like so one you're letting them know hey i got this and two thank you like we're so appreciative of what you've done this this couch that we're sitting on 
came from someone giving toward our wedding, blessing us with, with finances uh, at our wedding that we were able to buy this couch that we now film on. So we're grateful for that and we let all these people know. Um, but beyond that, I wanna talk about when I got to Uganda, I expected, I would have expected to see a lot of not very happy people because mm -hmm. they don't have a lot. They don't have a lot of worldly possessions. They don't, they struggle to find food and, and, and clean water. So as we pulled up to the village, I was, I, I guess I was prepared because I have heard about this in the past, but you still think, man, like you're looking around on this drive and you're like, there's just like nothing. And yet you pull, we pull up into this village in our bus and kids are running and cheering and smiling big and they're so full of joy and it's not because of what they have it's not because of their possessions because they have they had nothing all these little kids these moms and you know they're all smiling huge and excited and cheering and screaming and you know giving us fives as we're pulling up on the bus out the window mm -hmm. like we're putting our hands out and like they're so full of joy and they're so grateful they were grateful that we came and they were constantly saying thank you thank you for being here we appreciate you guys coming and like it just made me enjoy being there all the more because they were already grateful i hadn't even done anything but show up and it just it made that whole trip so much better and it it showed me like man like how dare me ever be ungrateful how dare i ever think I, I want more. I want more. I'm just not happy. I, I, you know, things aren't going my way. Like, like they don't know where their next meal's coming from. They don't know if they're going to have clean water. And yet they still have those big joyous smiles on their face. They, they enjoy playing with that, that broken down soccer ball, you know, that they've been playing with every day and they need a new one. Well, also when we show up, that's usually one of the gifts we give. They get new soccer balls and things like that. So, um, yeah, just think about those that, don't have even a, a, the slightest fraction of what we have here in America or wherever you happen to be. Mm -hmm. um, if you're watching this video, you have more than they have. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, we went to an Elevation concert recently and one of their songs is called Million Little Miracles. Mm -hmm. And it talks about all the things to be grateful for and the little things in your daily life that are absolute miracles that you're even breathing that you even exist yeah. but um it was a powerful moment for us because when they were playing that song on the screens were flashing all the things in this life that you could possibly be grateful for and we were both crying <laughs> because we're like god you're so good yeah. i mean it just Everything that you think they could possibly think of that you are grateful for was flashing on the screen throughout the whole song. And it just like was so amazing, so sobering. And yeah. I just had to put that in here because I never want to forget that moment. Yeah. Um, there are people out there that would love to have your worst days. Yeah. Probably your worst day may be someone's greatest like what they would have possession wise yeah and that's just wild to think about but if especially if you're in the usa you are so blessed yeah <laughs> like really though like do you realize how blessed you are please take time and just write things down i know he's going to talk about a gratitude journal soon but we should really be thinking about what we are grateful for every single day and not just once a year on Thanksgiving if you're in the USA, um, but really taking time out of your busy schedule to just have great perspective on what God has done for you. Um, I know a lot of times people talk about a pessimist looks at um, the glass half empty if it's halfway. They say, mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's half empty. An optimist says that the glass is half full. Mm -hmm. But the psalmist says, my cup runneth over. And yeah. I say that because we're going to go through some scriptures here. And there's a ton of them that come from the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. And my cup runneth over is a scriptural reference to Psalm 23, 5. And I just yeah. thought that was funny. It's awesome. like, my cup runneth over. Amen. But anyway, um, 
we're excited to go through these scriptures. I know he's going to quickly talk about gratitude journaling, yep. and then we'll go through some scriptures. I know it's already been 45 minute video, so. Yep. Yeah, if you're if you're in a slump, again, I talked about it in the beginning. If you feel ungrateful, you feel like nothing's going your way, and you're just like, man, I just need breakthrough. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that you know we talked about Terry Savelle Foy a few times. We like listening to her uh, her uh, her podcast, podcasts, read her her, books. watch her YouTube's, read her books. Five things successful people do before eight a.m. is one of her uh, one of my favorite books of her. She's written a bunch of them. Uh, but she also, when I helped her uh, with a, I guess it was a conference that she had recently, she sent me this grateful gratitude journal. It says grateful on the side, my gratitude journal and everything give thanks. So this is something that uh, she sells with like, you know, a package deal or something like that. But um, Or you can just buy a notebook. Yeah. So, uh, but this is one that she had given me and I had, when I started listening to her podcasts, you know, I was, I wouldn't say that I was ungrateful at that time, it, but it was something that as I listened, I was like, man, like she would just mention it in a few of her videos. I'm like, you know what? I really need to start do, doing some gratitude journaling. And um, it just, she put a challenge in one of her podcasts saying, you know what? For 30 days, do some gratitude journaling every day, spend, you know, you know, just write down 10 things that you're grateful for. Or maybe you want to spend more time. You're like, no, I'll spend 10 minutes. Just I'll write down at least 10 things within 10 minutes, which it's really easy to write down 10 things. I mean, I could ramble them off right now um, that it would take me like less than a minute to write down 10 things. So maybe you even want to like do 10 minutes of gratitude journaling, but it's amazing how many things that you'll find out that like, wow, like I am so blessed. Like you'll have like a hundred things before you know it, where you're just like, wow, I'm still writing. So, you know, it could be something as simple as having AC or heat or the roof over your head, or, you know, the bed that you sleep in, the clothes that you're wearing, the phone that you have, um, you know, the computer that you have, perhaps the money that's in your bank account, the food that's in your fridge. I mean, I can go on and on clean water. Um, yeah. there's so many things, the vehicle that you're driving, whatever it may be, you're going to find, you know, your significant other, your pet, your, whatever it is, you know, just begin writing those things down. And she says, you know, do it for 30 days. You want to make it a habit. So just doing that for 30 days, it will change your life. Just to, just to recognize what you're grateful for. And it may be some days, it may be the same things. You may find that you're writing the same thing over and over again. I challenge you to not do that. Maybe there's a couple things each, each day that you're like, I'm just so thankful for that. I'm gonna write it down again. But I challenge you to add to that list, not to write the same 10 things down every day. And maybe, maybe for you, it's I'm gonna spend 10 minutes a day mm -hmm. doing some gratitude journaling. But the cool thing is, you know, you can look back at that if you're having a bad day and you can just be like, you know what? I need to, I wrote my, what I'm grateful for this morning. I'm just going to look back and see what those things, oh man, yeah, that's right. It's like, it's a, just a great reminder, but it really what it's doing is it's renewing your mind. Right. And that's what the word of God does. It renews your mind. Um, so instead of focusing on what you're, what's not going right, as I've said before, you're focusing on what is going right. What do you have? How has God blessed you? It's really and, hard to have a bad day when you are looking at what you're grateful for and yeah. remembering what you're grateful for. It's hard to be in that bad attitude. Yeah. So I challenge you to do that. Um, the, the two things I challenge you to do is one, send a thank you note to someone you know, whatever it may be. Or if, if you're like, well, there's not anything that somebody's done anytime recently, maybe it's just sending a thank you to your parents or, you know, just someone in your Somebody life and it's just too completely you. out the, out of the blue, or maybe it is a thinking of you and then saying, Hey, I just want to, you know, within that card, I just want to thank you for being there for me for all these years, you know, through the, through the ups and the downs. And so I challenge you to send a thank you to someone or a thank you text, but I challenge you to go out of your way and send a card to someone actually. Um, and then um, two, start gratitude journaling. You know, give yourself 30 days of that. You don't even have to spend that much time doing it. Just make it a part of your daily routine. Get up in the morning, maybe that's the first thing you do, is just do some gratitude journaling. That puts your head in the right place to start your day too, so. Definitely.
All right, babe, get right. us going on some scriptures. All right. Is this for you? Mm -hmm. All right, so Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So we're supposed to submit our prayer requests to God with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that before? When we're not just supposed to say, hey God, I, I really need this. Like, He wants to be thanked. Um, I just really wanted to highlight that specific word in this scripture. Yeah. But we won't focus on the worrying and anxiety because that's a whole other topic. Watch those yep. videos on that. Yep. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus yep. for you. So, you know, giving thanks in all circumstances. There may be circumstances that you're just like, man, like, how can I give thanks for that? Well, you know, maybe God saved you from a car accident. Maybe something inconvenient happened and you're running late. But maybe if you had been running on time, you'd have right. gotten a car accident or mm -hmm. something really bad would have happened. So just giving thanks to God in all circumstances saying, God, I trust you. I trust that this happened for you had a plan for this to happen for some reason, and I'm trusting that as a result, your better plan, your better purpose, your perfect plan is going to happen. But so, even if it's something bad that happened, remember that Romans 8.28 says that He all works things. all things good, together good. for your good, yep. for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. Yep. So just realizing that you can trust an unknown future to a known God, and even when you don't understand what's happening, you know God's character. You know He loves you. That He'll never leave you stranded on your own. And that yeah. will help you through those bad, negative-looking circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, Colossians 2, verses 6 through 8 say, And now, just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust Him too for each day's problems. Live in vital union with Him. Let your roots grow down into Him and draw up nourishment from Him. See that you go on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. Let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all that He has done. Yep. We're supposed to overflow with joy and thanksgiving for what He's yep. done for us. It's not just, oh, like I'm supposed to be thankful. I need to like write a gratitude journal of things I'm grateful for. I just... Oh, I hate doing this. Mm -hmm. No, like we should be like bursting at the seams with how grateful we are and how thankful we are for our good God and what he's blessed us with. We should be overflowing in our lives with joy and thankfulness for all that he's done for us. Yeah. Yeah. And lots of times he blesses us through other people. That's mm -hmm. how he gets those finances to us. That's how he might get that encouraging word to us through others. So yes, we are thankful to other people because God is using them as vessels to get the means to us, the supplies to mm -hmm. us, the, the love to us, whatever it is that we're needing at that moment. So yeah, it's not just overflowing with thanksgiving to God, but to people around us as well. Yeah. And speaking of other people, Ephesians 1.16 says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Yeah. So. That's important. We yeah. need to be thankful for the people that God has placed in our lives. Yeah. Thanking God for them when we're praying, remembering yeah. them. And it's important. And a lot of times it just makes me appreciate something that someone's blessed me with even more when I thank them and they're like, no, that wasn't from me. That was, that was from the yeah. Lord. Like, thank, thank the Lord. Like the Lord told me to do that for you or to give that to you. Like, thank yeah. him. Like, it's not about me. And that, that's just awesome when, when mm -hmm. that happens too. It's like, wow. Okay. Well, thank you for listening to the Lord. That's right. <laughs> thank you for being that's obedient right. then. <laughs> First Chronicles 16, verse 34 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. 
Self-explanatory you know, right there. Just thank him for his love, for all that he does. Colossians 3.15, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. There we go. Yep. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 3 says, We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly in the love of everyone of, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. But I love that he says, We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers. Mm -hmm. We need to thank God for our earthly siblings, for our earthly um Brothers, brothers and sisters in Christ, in Christ yeah. um, relatives, friendships, mentors, teachers, pastors, whatever it is, give thanks to God for the people that are impacting you and bringing you up to that next level, your, your inner circle. Thank God for people that are inspiring and encouraging you, refining you as iron sharpens iron as well. Yeah. Colossians 4.2 don't be weary in prayer. Keep at it. Watch for God's answers and remember to be thankful when they come. That's huge because yep. remember what you're praying. Remember what you're asking for. And remember also to not just ask, but to, to thank God, to thank him when he answers those prayers. Or even honestly, a lot of times when I pray, I like to just pray, Lord, I thank you that, and then whatever it is that I'm praying for it, the Bible talks about speak to what is not as if it is. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll just be like, Lord, I thank you for healing so-and-so as I'm praying for their healing. I just thank you in advance, Lord, because I know you're a good God, that you're a God that your desire is to heal. But remember to thank God when you see those. That's why sometimes it's a good idea to have a prayer journal because sometimes the prayer may not be answered for years. And you'll, you know, and if you have a prayer journal, maybe you're writing someone's prayer in there, you can remember to check up with them when you're going back through your prayers. Hey, I just I know it's been over a year since we prayed about this, but how is this situation? And maybe somebody you haven't been in touch with for a while. Oh, that God answered that prayer. Well, thank the Lord. Like now we can thank the Lord for answering that prayer. So always yes. never forget to thank God for uh, coming through and answering your prayers. Yeah, and you don't just want to move on to the next big thing without telling the Lord thank you. You've, you need to remember that what you've been blessed with is something you've been praying for in the past. So don't just shove it off and move on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, 1 Samuel 12, 24 says, But be sure to fear the Lord and serve Him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things He has done for you. This is that perspective shift, the remembrance, yeah. the attitude of gratefulness in remembrance. When you consider what great things he has done for you, that ushers in the gratitude. So. Mm -hmm. I like that. First Chronicles 16, 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Yes. Tell. Yep others what God has done for you. Yep. It's not just thanking him, but, but sharing with others what God has done. Yeah. Because yeah. lots of times that helps add and build faith in other people. Because mm -hmm. God's no respecter of people. Because yep. if he did it for somebody else, he can do it for you. Yeah. And if they've been so. maybe perhaps frustrated with a so-called unanswered prayer, we have to trust in God's perfect timing. But if they see, oh, wow, God came through with your prayers and you were, you were persistent about that, like the persistent widow in the, in the Bible, um, it will encourage them to continue to persevere in their prayers, be consistent and trust that God's going to come through. So. Yes. Psalm 50 verse 23 says, But true praise, or thanksgiving, is a worthy sacrifice. This really honors me. Those who walk my paths will receive salvation from the Lord. This goes along with when you feel bad, when you feel like in a negative attitude, a negative headspace, depressed, down, sorrowful. This is where worship, praise, thanksgiving is a sacrifice. We oftentimes yeah. don't feel like 
being grateful or worshiping God when we feel like our world's crumbling around us. Mm -hmm. But that is where our praise or our thanksgiving is a worthy sacrifice. And that honors God because we're not letting the world's circumstances dictate how we feel. We live above our emotions and feelings. And yeah. we live according to how the Bible tells us to. And the Word wants us, tells us to be grateful. And that it is a worthy sacrifice. And it's a sacrifice because God knows that we don't feel like always being grateful when our world is confusing or something's not going right. But that's where it's so important to remember what God has done for you, how He's come through for you. And when you start praising, worshiping Him, and being grateful, that attitude gets shifted and you get out of that quicksand of complaining. Yeah, that's so. good. That's good. This next one even talks about yeah. worship. Uh, Psalm 95, 2 says, Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, with thankful hearts. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs and praise. So, I mean, looking at that, I, that first and foremost reminded me of, you know, in the Old Testament where a person couldn't even go before God. There was only one person that could go into the Holy of Holies, and that was, was it the priest or whatever? The high priest. Yeah, the high priest was the only one that could go before God on behalf of everyone. So we can already be thankful living in the time that we live, live in. That I mean, I can just, we can just say a prayer right now. The veil was pray. torn. Yeah. When Jesus Amen. died on the cross, the veil was torn, and we can go to prayer right now. and, and Come speak boldly to, before yeah. the throne of God. Yeah. So Amen. just going into prayer, you can already be thankful. You can already have thankful hearts that you can spend time in prayer. You don't have to go to somebody and say, hey, will you take, will you go and speak to God? You know, here's my request. So, um, and just honestly going into prayer and, and grumbling and complaining and the Lord doesn't want to hear that. God doesn't want to hear that. Yeah, he wants you to be honest, but do your best to come with a cheerful heart, to come with praises and remember what God has already done for you. You know, it's, it is important to be real with God. I mean, sometimes you, you just have to be and just be like, God, I'm so frustrated with this and whatever. But, but you can also you at the same time be thankful. Lord, thank you for this and whatever. But Yeah, and if you read the book of Psalms, David authored a majority of the book of Psalms. And he's real with God. Yep. I mean, he's yelling at God, screaming at God. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice a theme in so many psalms, the parallel between all of them. The common theme is he starts with complaining and being real with God and laying his heart bare. But by the end of the psalm, he is rejoicing in God's goodness, faithfulness, yep. and praising God. Yeah. So you can be real with God, but then when you remember who He is, His character, what He's done, His faithfulness, His goodness, it completely flips the script yeah. and takes you out of this miserable state into a state where you can't even contain your joy. So yes, you can be real, but look at what David did in the book of Psalms. Like Literally every time it's flipped. The script mm -hmm. is flipped. So, yeah. Yeah trying to think of I think that this song had a like come into his presence with thanksgiving in our hearts and give him praise I don't give know that one. <laughs> so I assume that that's I'm where sure. where this Psalm 95 comes from or where that yeah. song comes from is from Psalm 95 one. so yeah yes Colossians three seventeen says and whatever you do or say let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus and come with him into the presence of God, the Father, to give him your thanks. Yeah. I mean, we need to just spend time with God thanking him. Mm. That's the whole point. They come into his presence in this verse to give him thanks. Amen. Uh, Psalm 9, 1. I will praise you, give thanks to you, Lord with all my heart and tell everyone about the marvelous things you do, which just goes with one that we read mm -hmm. earlier. So not only thanking him, but sharing with others, like what God has done, it will encourage others. So, yep. So many scriptures in the Bible telling, um, the older adults to tell the upcoming generations about God's goodness and faithfulness. So mm -hmm. you 
maybe need to tell somebody what you're thankful for, and that will inspire their faith in God. Amen. James 1.17 says, But whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God, the creator of all light, and he shines forever without good or shadow. So whatever is without good, shadow, um, yeah. without change or shadow, you said Sorry. good or shadow, that's fine. Without change or shadow. Yep. Um, so whatever is good, I was looking forward to the explaining it. Yeah. So whatever is good or perfect that's happening in your life, you know who gave it to you. It says whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God. Yep. So if you've got something good or perfect in your life, you best be thanking God because he's the one who gave it to you. Amen. So, Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. All right, Psalm 118, 24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That was a song, too. Yep, I know that this one. This is the day. Oh, I'm this thinking of a different. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord has made. I will rejoice. <laughs> <Wait, go ahead. laughs> You're thinking of a different one? There's another song that has that exact verse, but mm. a different melody. Got it. Um, Proverbs 15:30 says, "A cheerful look brings joy to the heart, but good news gives and good news gives health to the bones." Mm -hmm. Goes right along with the scripture that James talked about at the beginning of this video. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a cheerful look, good news that brings health to the bones. Like we need to be meditating on good things, which goes right around to Philippians 4, 8, to think on anything that is good and true and noble and right. You see yeah. how the Bible just coincides with every single verse? Yeah. And it's pretty amazing. Love that. Good news gives health, health to the bones. That's great. Uh, Ephesians 5, 20, always give thanks for everything to our God and Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So. Yes, that's good. Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9. Say thank you to the Lord for being so good, for always being so loving and kind. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has saved you from your enemies. He brought the exiles back from the farthest corners of the earth. They were wandering homeless in the desert, hungry and thirsty and faint. Lord, help, they cried, and he did. Mm -hmm. He led them straight to safety and a place to live. Oh, that these men would praise the Lord for his loving kindness and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty soul and fills the hungry soul with good things. That is the God we serve. Amen. He is amazing. That's good. Hebrews 13, 15. With Jesus' help, we will continually offer our sacrifice of praise to God by telling others of the glory of his name. Amen. Similar to the other ones. Sacrifice of, other. of praise. Oh. Once again, those yep. those words, that phrase is always together, it seems like. Yeah. Daniel 2.23, I thank and praise you, O God of my fathers, for you have given me wisdom and glowing health. And now even this vision of the king's dream and the understanding of what it means. You know, I, I like this verse because it's not always things that you that are tangible that we are thanking God for. Mm -hmm. Like when you're gratitude journaling, look at what Daniel's thanking God for. Yeah. He's thanking him for wisdom. Well, wisdom is gained through reading the Bible, yeah. and it is spiritually understood. Somebody who's not saved cannot understand what this Bible even means yeah. and how it applies to them. Yep. So it's it true. is amazing when you can thank God for the intangible things that are invaluable. Like there's no price tag on wisdom mm -mm. or on glowing health, as Daniel talks about. Because there are people out there that are filthy rich, but are so sick in body that they can't even enjoy their money. Mm. Health is so important. And Daniel goes on to explain how he can understand the vision of the king's dream and the understanding of what it means. Well, there's spiritual gifts that we can be grateful for. Yep. That the Holy Spirit's using us as willing vessels and that we have understanding of the scriptures and can explain to people what they're going through with scriptural references. Like, what an amazing thing to be grateful for. Yeah, that's good. So uh, we have two more to go. Psalm 136, 3 through 4. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords for his loving kindness continues forever. Praise him 
who alone does mighty miracles for his loving kindness continues forever. Yeah, there's constant, consistent themes here. Yep. Psalm 100 verses 4 and 5. Go through his open gates with great thanksgiving. Yep. Enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is always good. He is always loving and kind. And his faithfulness goes on and on to each succeeding generation. God is so worthy of our praise and thanksgiving, you guys. Amen. We There's so many verses we could go through. That was just a select few. <laughs> yeah. But there are so many examples throughout the Bible of gratitude, thankfulness, remembering God's goodness and faithfulness. And um, we just wanted to give you a, a sliver of them. Meditate on these. Like, write them down. Study them in your own study time with the Bible and mm. really put these into practice. There is, there's a reason that they're in the Bible. God didn't put them there for no reason. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, we thank you all for joining us for today's video on gratitude, yes. on being grateful, on being thankful. Um, and uh, drop a comment and, you know, letting us know what you're thankful for on our social media, wherever, whatever it may be. Just to say, I'm thankful for this. Just get it out there into the world. You know, those life-giving words, that positivity um, that gratefulness. Um, and uh, we thank you for continuing to watch our videos. Um, for, your, for, for those of you who supported us, you know who you are. We thanked you personally. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, and uh, I'm not sure 100% what our next video is going to be. but You'll be surprised. We'll be, we'll be bringing another one next week. We'll eventually get back into Bible study with us. Um, but uh, we're going to do a few just kind of uh, topical type videos first. So uh, join us next Monday for another spiritual video. Um, but we don't just film spiritual videos. I want to encourage you to go to jamesandjazz.com and on the home page you'll click on that videos button. It'll bring you down to three different sections of videos. That first section is spiritual videos. We do, as I just talked about, Bible study with us. We filmed um, we do one chapter usually per video. We've done the whole book of John, the book of James, Philippians, Galatians, right? Mm -hmm. um, That's it. And uh, we're going to jump into another book soon, so you'll find that out eventually. And we also do topical just like we did today. So as she talked about, Battlefield of the Mind is one of them. Um, we've done uh, Fruit of the Spirit. We've done... Tongue has uh, the power of life and death. Yep. Tons of different Armor videos of God. Yeah, that you can check out. Uh, just check out that section of videos. Our second section of videos is Physically Fit videos. That's one way we want to help you to be physically healthy. Um, by working out, help you to stay consistent, show you what to do. A lot of people go into the gym and they have no idea what to do. They don't know what the first thing is they should do. So we want to help you. And all that we've filmed thus far is stuff at home, but we're very soon going to be putting stuff up in the gym. But we show you how to work out at home, full length workouts with dumbbells, resistance bands. We have some stuff with kettlebells. Uh, with the circular bands, um, and we do cardio in place, and we also have exercise demonstration videos where we use a lot of that same equipment and just show you quickly a certain exercise you can do with that equipment, certain body parts. Uh, I just encourage you to check it out and you'll learn more about it there, and that'll help you to get in good shape so you feel better, so you have more energy, so you're energized, y'all. That's what it's all about, right? And then our final section of videos is life and relationship videos. The life section is to help you to get to know us better, uh, to get to know James and Jazz better. And then the relationship section is we want to help you to have healthy relationships. So we have some topics that are very challenging. We'll help you to grow in that area of relationships. So uh, if you want to be in the know with what's going on with James and Jazz, uh, what we're doing in life, when we're putting up new videos, things like that, I uh, want to encourage you to go to jamesandjazz.com. You'll notice at the top and the bottom of the page, we have our social media icons. Follow us on social media. Follow, like, subscribe to our YouTube. We have Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. So appreciate your support on those as well. Yes, and scroll down to the bottom of our website, jamesandjazz.com, and you'll see where you can subscribe to our email list. Right next to that is how you can book us to speak at an event, whether it's a church, school, conference. Let us know the details and we'll get back to you. 
And then at the top of our website, you will see the donate tab. So mm -hmm. first of all, thank you for praying for our ministry. It's very much appreciated. And secondly, if you feel led to partner with us financially, we just want to give you the opportunity to be able to do so. Obviously, no pressure or obligation because we just give all these videos to you completely for free. But if these videos have really helped you and you're like, hey, James and Jazz, like, I just want to give you $10 just to say thank you for all the time and effort and hard work that you put into creating these videos and helping me grow, then we'll gladly receive. And thank you very, thank very you. much. Um, we want to create high quality content for you. And so we do all these completely for free for you. But yes, it takes a lot of time to prepare for these and film and edit and all the back end. And then Christian ladies out there, check out that courses tab on our website. It will take you to diamond31ministries.com and check that out for yourself. Yes. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. And we'll see you next time on right. jamesandjazz.com. <laughs>